In the year 2010, a simple cattle ranch became popularly known as the Skinwalker Ranch after it gained worldwide media attention when a found footage of strange occurrences in the ranch was released. For several decades, there have been reports of UFO sightings and unexplained phenomena in the ranch, but a man named Hoyt Miller still decided to invest in it in the hopes of turning it into something special. Following the disappearance of his 10-year-old son, Cody, almost a year ago, Modern Defense Enterprises, or MD, sent a team of experts to investigate the strange occurrences in the ranch and hopefully find some answers to the disappearance of Cody Miller. The team's footage is later released by a journalist named Jacob Rundles, who managed to obtain it from an unknown source. The release of this footage caused his sudden disappearance in the year 2013. It's the day Cody disappeared. Footage shows Hoyt arriving at the ranch in his pickup truck with a gift for his son, who's celebrating his 10th birthday that day. After giving him his present, Hoyt spends the rest of the day playing with his son while his wife films them. At one point, a bright blinding light suddenly appears behind Cody, and in a blink of an eye, the light vanishes, along with him. Hoyt and his wife both are unable to react fast enough due to shock, and when they realize what is going on, they are too late, Cody has been taken. When this incident garners attention, skeptics refuse to believe the authenticity of the footage. There have been rumors going around that Hoyt only faked it, but there are still some who slightly believe that we are not alone, and if it can happen at the ranch, it can happen anywhere else. There is one thing that cannot be questioned, the fact that Hoyt will stay at the ranch, no matter how long, until he finds his son. In 2011, the current time, MDE stationed a team of experts in the ranch led by Sam Green, an expert in socio-cultural anthropology. He asks a friend, Cameron Murphy, an investigative journalist, to come over to observe the third-party perspective during their investigation. Behind the camera is Britton Sloan, a freelance cameraman who has years of experience in this field of strange phenomena. He never once came across something out of the ordinary, but he hopes he will this time. Sam then introduces Cameron to Hoyt Miller, before taking him to the ranch's stables, where the team's field veterinary tech, Lisa Morrow, checks one of their sick horses. Despite having worked as a vet tech for years, Lisa is utterly disturbed by the cattle mutilations in the area and reveals that until now, she has found no explanation for this strange phenomena. Two other team members are Matt Johnson and Ray Reed. Matt previously worked for the media lab at MDE, where he met Sam, who recruited him for this project. He shares the same passion for the paranormal with Sam, and hopes that this widely contested field will be legitimized by what they hope to find in the ranch. In charge of the ranch's security is Ray, an ex-military. He manages the cameras and the motion sensors equipped in every corner of the house and its surrounding areas. After a brief introduction, Sam gathers the team for a quick trip to the site in the property where Hoyt previously spotted a body of a deer. He hopes to get some clues about what they are dealing with. On their way, Hoyt explains that the acreage of the entire ranch is not yet determined, but it's believed to be close to a thousand, perfect for a UFO to take a stroll. The ranch stretches out to parts of southern Idaho, the four corners of the Uinta Basin and Nevada and California, considered the place that attracts all things paranormal in the United States. Matt, who's an expert in paranormal sighting, explains that there was evidence that supported the theory of alien life even back in the 1800s and other incidents during the past decade. United States New Area 51, the facility for confidential military research, is also stationed near the area. Not long after, they arrive at the site, and Lisa instantly knows that the deer passed away from natural causes. Bad news for Sam, who still insists that Lisa obtain a sample. When Hoyt notices a storm coming, he urges the team to head back. At the house, Ray starts to show them the camera feeds before they gather for dinner. Hoyt proposes a toast. Ever since Cody disappeared, he's got little to no help, so he expresses his gratitude to the team. He also believes that the thing which took Cody has been watching them the entire time. After dinner, Ray and Matt start testing the cameras on all parts of the house. Ray has deployed motion sensors across the property and programmed most of them to detect large objects, so they will know if there is something. Everyone starts to settle in for the night except Sam and Cameron, who are passing the time playing chess. Cameron asks Sam about the rumors that Hoyt faked the tape. Sam explains there are many skeptics, to which Cameron agrees. Despite having evidence, some people always deny the truth. Nonetheless, they are there to help Hoyt find answers. After playing chess, Cameron starts recording in his bedroom for his video journal his first night at the ranch. Lisa arrives, grabs his camera and points it at him. Though they are unaware, a human-like figure can be seen standing outside their bedroom window. It starts to walk away when Cameron takes the camera back. Later, at around 3 in the morning, the team is suddenly jolted awake by a loud ringing sound that pierces their skulls through their ears. Hoyt grabs his gun, and everyone gathers in the dining room. After more than a minute of torment, the noise stops. All of a sudden, they hear footsteps on the roof. When it stops, the entire crew goes out of the house to investigate. They notice something strange on the roof, so he climbs up a ladder to check. What he sees there is nothing any sane person can explain. A horde of slaughtered bats spread across the roof. Turns out that what they thought were footsteps were actually the bats falling one by one. What's more bizarre is that there is no blood. It's like they suddenly fell and expired, all in the same place. Lisa's examination of the deceased bats reveals that they suffered no trauma and no traces of irregularities in their organs. She believes that the noise earlier messed with their sonar. 
Hoyt starts to grow anxious, saying that this is only the beginning of something more. The next morning, a psychiatric doctor calls Hoyt regarding the recovery of his wife, who suffered from psychological trauma due to Cody's disappearance. While the crew sips on their morning coffee, Sam comes up to them and mentions a vehicle out of the pasture. They are puzzled, as MD has never mentioned a visitor. Hoyt explains that the vehicle was parked there for almost an hour, and Ray finds out that the vehicle has no plate number on it. All of a sudden, the vehicle starts to drive off. The crew can tell that something is not right by the looks of it. Afterward, they converge in an MDE minivan for Matt's findings regarding the strange noise they heard last night. He finds out that the noise was composed of two sounds, the high-pitched one that woke them up, and infrasound, a sound that extends below the range of human hearing. It can occur naturally or be triggered manually. A further explanation by Matt reveals that the military has tested infrasound on several occasions, and the results are outstanding. It can cause naturally occurring illnesses like vertigo, and feelings of anxiety, depression, fear, and other awful physical side effects. In terms of a natural occurrence, Infrasound can be released by natural disasters like earthquakes, avalanches, or even volcanoes, and other animals like whales. Lisa deduces that the sound they heard could have been caused by a wild animal. However, the information does not make sense, there are no such animals present within the area. Night falls, and the crew heads outside to meet a Native American whom Sam called to bless the ranch. However, before the blessing, the man made it clear that the land was deserted by his people due to the unfortunate events that happened in the past. He only agreed to come to give some protection to the crew. He further explains that in the past, his ancestors hunted in the surrounding valleys, but the warriors would return to the tribe disturbed. There would be an entire tribe disappearing without any trace. They believe that the land is cursed by darkness, and he bluntly suggests the crew leave this instant. But since he knows that the crew has chosen to stay despite the haunting stories of the ranch, the man tries his best to give them protection by imploring the blessings of his ancestors. In the middle of the ritual, the man suddenly has a hard time breathing. He slowly slumps to the ground, clasping his chest. Lisa rushes to his aid, but the man stands and announces that he cannot do anything for them anymore. He orders them to get out of the ranch before storming off. Later, Cameron films himself for his video journal when Sam calls him. Something was caught in their sensors just a few seconds ago. It was the size of a helicopter. The team gears up and proceeds to the site, where they find the body of a calf with no bite marks or claw marks. The incisions on its head are also flawless, and there is no blood. Sam instructs them to bag up the calf for examination when they hear the distant scream of a girl, prompting the team to immediately head back to the house. Days pass by, and it is now the 11th of August. A car approaches the house, but stops at the entrance. From the point of view of the cameras, everything appears normal. Until something is caught in the kitchen camera, Lisa washes her face to prepare for bed when a figure of a young boy passes behind her and disappears. She reaches out for a paper towel and wipes her face. Turns out that she had a nosebleed, which she explains to Sam the next day when he notices the paper towel in the bin. She adds that she's had a couple of nosebleeds ever since she got there, thinking it's because of the ranch's topography. However, Sam thinks that something else is causing it, so he asks Ray to play the footage from the other night. There, they see the same boy passing behind Lisa, and what's more strange is that the boy passes through the same place at the same time, 11-11, every night. The boy appears to be the missing Cody. To see it for themselves, Sam gathers the team in the kitchen area and turns on the lights. He tells Matt to count down to 11-11 as the trio frantically prepares for what's next. Hoyt appears and starts asking what's happening, but when Sam tells him that there is energy inside the house, Hoyt grabs his gun. They try to calm him down, and Sam announces that no matter what they all see, the camera has to see it first. The team stands in silence as Matt counts down to 11-11. However, there is nothing. When they start to lose hope, Cody dashes to the front door. Hoyt follows, trying to stop him. Cody enters a small passageway into the shed. Hoyt grabs an axe and starts destroying the wooden doors. But when he finally enters the shed, Cody is nowhere to be found. In disappointment, Hoyt slowly makes his way back to the house. Sam calls Matt and Lisa inside and shows them the footprints, which came from something they don't know. He orders Matt to get Lisa's kit to cast the tracks. Lisa deduces that they are canine prints though unusually enormous. While Matt scans the area, he notices a metal box. When opened, it is empty, but on its face is printed the huge initials of the MDE, putting the entire team into a spiral in confusion. Sam immediately calls the MDE, and it is revealed that they were at the ranch from the year 1967 to 1971. He explains to the team that MDE answered all his questions and is willing to provide documentation. Hoyt feels betrayed when he learns that MDE was there before his son disappeared, and they weren't even warned about God knows what that's hiding there. He angrily confronts Sam, who tells him that the previous project by MDE has nothing to do with Cody. In frustration, Hoyt tries to make Sam reveal the reason why they were sent to the ranch, realizing that it's not just for helping him find his son, but for something else. He warns Sam before storming out of the room. Later, Matt finds two more of the same containers buried in the shed. From one of the containers, he finds a tape from the 70s, which matches the time frame when MDE was in the area. Ray keeps the tape while he tries to find something he can use to check what's in it. In the middle of the night, the camera facing the pasture catches two balls of light approaching from a distance. When the lights converge, it flies directly toward the camera, 
cutting off the feed momentarily. The scene then shifts through all the cameras. Inside the barn is Hoyt's dog, sleeping. The scene continues to change until it stops in Cody's room. Beside Lisa is Cody, staring at her. His body flickers, almost like a light bulb. In the living room, Britton is woken up by bright flashing lights coming from outside. He grabs the camera and starts inspecting the house. He tries to open the curtains in the kitchen, but his camera feed suddenly glitches, prompting him to return to the dining area. Just then, the bright light flashes outside again, this time through the window and the door. His breathing starts to feel heavy as he opens the curtains. To his terror, a gigantic wolf jumps right in front of the door, momentarily cutting the camera feed. After the incident, the team reviews the footage from the camera facing the house, and the wolf can be seen lurking just outside the living room. They decide to hunt it down, however, there are no tracks in the field. Lisa believes that it's the same creature whose tracks they found at the shed, which is five times larger than the average wolf. All of a sudden, the wolf shows itself, and Hoyt fires, prompting it to flee. The team drives deeper into the pasture to follow the wolf. However, it disappears past the ridge. A further search leads them down a cave system. Inside the cave, they find paintings from hundreds of years ago depicting a futuristic spacecraft. On the other side, the bones of a primitive man lie on the ground. As they continue exploring the cave, they suddenly hear a low growling sound, forcing them to retreat to the house. Afterward, the team reviews the footage and Matt believes that the spacecraft in the cave painting is of Amana, a futuristic flying vehicle depicted in ancient Indian writings from 6,000 years ago. Cameron can't seem to comprehend what they just unveiled, saying that their discovery just added to the list of strange phenomena they've experienced. Sam believes they are close to finding something bigger than the wolf or even Cody, prompting Sam to make unnecessary comments about him, which upsets Hoyt. When Sam realizes his mistake, he goes out with Cameron to apologize to Hoyt, who also expresses his apologies and appreciation to the team for staying there. All of a sudden, a bright light flashes inside the barn, prompting them to rush inside. They slowly examine the barn, but they find nothing, everything seems clear. Britton climbs up a ladder and checks the loft. Hoyt, Sam, and Cameron follow. This leads them into confusion. All of a sudden, Cameron hears a faint noise coming from the corner. He leads Britton to the corner and slowly makes his way closer, checking for the source of the noise. A bat suddenly flies out, causing him to jolt back in shock. The scene shifts to the views of the cameras throughout the property. Hoyt's dog can be seen lying in the barn. Suddenly the camera glitches, and the dog starts barking at something from the obstructed view. This goes on for almost a minute, until an invisible force attacks the dog and snaps its neck. Back inside the house, Ray has been checking the cameras and notices that the pastor's camera is down. Ray hands Matt a walkie and tells him to go out for a quick troubleshooting. He seems quite hesitant, but Sam urges him. Ray instructs Matt to stand several feet away from the camera to check for focus. As Matt waves his hand, an unknown force suddenly causes some grass to float, and the next thing they know is Matt getting hurled out of view by a strong wind before the camera shuts down. The next morning, Hoyt prepares the grave for his dog while Matt, fortunately, survives the attack. Though he suffered from injuries, he is recovering and will be fine. Lisa, however, cannot explain what they witnessed from the footage of the barn the night Hoyt's dog was attacked. Cameron seems a little spaced out, that he can't hear what Lisa was explaining to him earlier. Suddenly, they hear commotion from outside. It's Matt and Sam. Matt's broken hand is now supported by a sling. When Sam asks why he is leaving, Matt erupts in frustration and anger, brought on by the ordeal last night. He starts yelling, telling them that he will be taking himself to the hospital before booking the first flight out of there. They have no idea, nor even an ounce of explanation for what happened last night, and that is Matt's last straw, he is determined to leave the place. Everyone knows they shouldn't stay much longer, so if they have the common sense to process that, they should come with him. Nobody else decides to go, and Matt drives off while berating Sam. The team is left in confusion and shock, with Cameron mentioning that they still have Hoyt's truck if they decide to leave. Later, Ray calls Cameron, Britton, and Lisa to show them the tape Matt found inside the MDE container. Ray managed to transfer the tape to the hard drive. He then plays it to further show them what he found. The tape begins with a countdown and then starts with a car driving into the property. There are men dressed in hazmat suits. After a short drive, they stop by the side of the road where a young girl named Rebecca can be seen waiting. The hazmat men step out to the car to fetch Rebecca, who appears to be in a state of shock. They take her to the car and one of them informs the others at the camp they are on their way back. Another one is shown to possess a gun, suggesting that they might be dealing with something dangerous. The scene shifts to the camp as the hazmat men escort Rebecca toward a tent. All of a sudden, she starts calling out to her mother. One of them tells Rebecca that's what they are also trying to figure out, so he asks her if she remembers the last time she saw her. Rebecca refuses to say anything and proceeds to walk into the tent. She is taken into another room while the hazmats go for decontamination. Then they watch from a glass window as a woman attempts to inject something into Rebecca. However, something goes terribly wrong. Rebecca turns out to be possessing powers that can control a person or take their life the way she wants it. She controls the woman, causing her to inject the dosage into before attacking the rest of the crew inside. In the ensuing chaos, everyone ends up to their demise, with the last man getting attacked by what appears to be a mummified alien. Britton, Cameron, Ray, 
and Lisa know that Sam is obsessed about finding something so they decide not to show him the tape. They are also worried about Hoyt's reaction, so they keep it to themselves in the meantime. Cameron believes that they should leave the area, he tells Ray, Lisa, and Britton they can use Hoyt's truck. While they are talking outside, the wolf appears. They immediately climb aboard the truck as the wolf approaches them, it is so big that they appear to be smaller. The wolf starts encircling them, growling at the windows. All of a sudden, it rams the truck. Its strength is enough to spin the car, despite having four full-grown adults inside. After the first attack, the wolf vanishes into thin air, and Lisa starts attacking Cameron. When they return to the house, Lisa cannot remember anything. The incident causes a stain in their once close-knit tie. Everyone decides to leave, except Sam, who still tries to convince them to stay. For him, they are so close to a discovery of a lifetime. The answer to the mystery surrounding the ranch. While everyone is packing their bags, Hoyt waits outside with a gun. A few feet away from him, Cody appears and points a finger in a direction before running away. Hoyt immediately follows without notifying the team. Meanwhile, the team finishes packing and prepares to leave, but when they go outside, they come upon the truck, which looks like something big has fallen onto it from the sky, and they didn't even hear a thing. They immediately head back inside. Sam informs them that the van will not arrive until the morning, causing Lisa to get frustrated and end up in a heated argument with Sam. She believes they are somewhat part of an experiment by the MD, and Cameron agrees, saying that there is no way MD has no idea what's in the ranch. At about 3 in the morning the following day, Lisa approaches Cameron and informs him that something is wrong with Ray. They find him in the kitchen, holding an apple and looking distressed. Ray pulls out his gun and points it at them. However, Ray pulls the trigger and the team starts to panic, and the lights start flashing outside. They duck and crawl inside the house, hoping not to get seen by what's out there. They crawl toward the kitchen area, and there they meet a humanoid being, resembling a gray alien. With the alien in pursuit, the team tries to flee into another room. It starts pounding at the door before disappearing. Cameron orders Sam to get the ATV while he rushes to Lisa's aid, who's screaming from inside the bathroom. He sees a flashing light, and when he manages to open the door, Lisa is nowhere to be found. With Britton, Cameron heads out of the house and proceeds to the barn, where Sam yells for help. But Sam also disappears as the lights continue flashing. Cameron attempts to climb aboard the ATV, but an invisible force suddenly pulls him away. The camera falls, and Britton tries to start the ATV, but the alien catches up and takes him. Everything goes black. The next day, the camera shows Cody standing near the entrance, not moving a muscle for hours. At 3 in the morning, a huge spacecraft with blinding lights passes over Cody. All of a sudden, a smaller spacecraft stops just above him, illuminating him in the dark. From that day, more reports of UFO sightings and bizarre incidents, including the one caught on tape by the team, became popularly known throughout the world.